Yo, 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 what's cracking, everybody? So today I'm coming in with five tips to help you improve your arrangements. So you can see I got a song loaded up here, and this is one I've been working on pretty recently, and it's almost done. So this is what I'm gonna be using to demonstrate most of these arrangement tips. So without further ado, let's just jump right into tip number one, which is splitting up your channels. So if you take a look at this beat, you can see that I have all the different sounds split up into their own unique pattern. So like, for example, with the drums, instead of having all the drums on one pattern and then just turning that on or off throughout the beat, I have a pattern for the kick, a pattern for each snare, a pattern for different hi-hats and shakers and perks. Everything has its own pattern, so that way I can fully customize when different instruments are gonna be playing and when they're not gonna be playing. So in order to demonstrate how you can set this up for yourself without having to make individual patterns each time, I'm gonna open up a new beat real quick. All right, so right here I have this much simpler, really incomplete beat. And you can see I have two of these sounds exported as WAV files, but this main pattern, this contains pretty much all of my other sounds. So what I do whenever I make a beat is when I'm making the chords and I'm making the drums and the bass lines and all that, I do it all in one pattern. And this just makes it really easy to continuously loop the same pattern over and over again while making this stuff. And it's especially useful when I'm mixing the beat because then, like I said, I can just continuously loop it. And then once it comes time to arrange, I actually split the pattern. So you can see this beat is completely unmixed just because I didn't end up using it for anything. I didn't really like it. It's kind of trash if I'm being honest. But while I'm mixing it, what I could do is I could just put this on pattern and then just press play and continuously play the beat over and over again. Then eventually, once it's time to arrange, I'll just go over to the pattern. I will right click it move down to split by channel and click that. And just like that, all of these different sounds got separated into their own individual patterns. So once I start arranging the beat, I can kind of just copy and paste all of this like this. And I'm doing this by pressing control B. And then, you know, at the intro, I could take out the drums, you know, maybe only include the bass line in like certain parts of the beat. Maybe right here, I don't want the melody playing. And then over here, I want this melody to drop out. You can see it just gives you a lot more control over the arrangement. So tip number two on the list is gonna be taking song structure into account. And what this means is basically whenever you listen to most music, usually there's a verse and there's a chorus, sometimes there's a bridge. So if you're gonna have a rapper or a singer hopping on your beat, you really gotta take this into consideration. So for example, in this song that I was working on, it opens up with an intro and then it goes straight into the verse. And usually the verses are a lot more low energy than the choruses. Obviously this isn't the case all the time, but typically when you're making your beats, you want the verse section to be a little bit more subdued and laid back than the hook. So you can see in this verse segment, I have 16 bars where it's the drums playing, halfway through a couple more drums come in, and other than that, it's just the chords and the bass line. And then halfway through, a little counter melody comes in. And that's about all I would really need for the verse because it's supposed to be a more chill section of the song. Then if we take a look at the next 16 bars, this is the whole hook section. And for the first eight bars, I'm singing a pre-hook melody that leads into the next eight bars, which is the actual catchy part of the hook. So for this pre-hook, I dropped out all the drums and I added in a couple new layers to the chords. Then once the main section of the hook came in, I added another counter melody and all the drums came back in. And all of these different layers to the chords, along with these couple counter melodies and all the drum sounds, make this section of the song very energetic. Which, as I said before, may not always be the case. There are some songs where the choruses are supposed to be more laid back than the verse, but usually, that's what you wanna go for. You want the hook to be the most lively part of the song. And then other than that, I just have a short eight bar intro, eight bar outro. Tip number three is gonna be using automations when you make your beat. If you don't know what automations are, I have a full in-depth guide linked in the description. You know, I don't wanna be that guy just denying you of information in this video and telling you to go watch another one. But in this video, I'm just gonna give you a real brief overview. So if you wanna go more in depth, definitely check that out. So a good example of use of automations is gonna be right here at the intro of the song. Basically for the intro, I have some of the drums playing and then I have these chords and I made them slowly fade in by using a volume automation. And all I did to create that was I went to the chords in the channel rack, I right clicked the volume knob, which is the right knob, and I went down to create automation clip. Then I just adjusted these knobs so that way this curvature is gonna be the curvature that the volume knob follows.
So right there in that little example, you probably noticed that the pad chords started pretty much inaudible, and then they slowly got louder as that intro continued on. And you can make automations for almost anything. If you look later in the song, you see I got a ton of them. I have automations on the guitar solo for panning. I have different automations for the EQ to put low pass filters on in certain segments of the song. I have more volume automations to make it so certain instruments will slowly fade out rather than just instantly turning off. There's a whole lot you can do with them. And once you start using them and using them efficiently, it's gonna add a whole new layer of complexity to your arrangements. It just makes everything a lot more interesting, you know? Tip number four on the list is gonna be cutting up the beat. Now this kind of depends on what genre you're making. Right. If you're making like rock music or something, this probably wouldn't really fit the vibe. Same thing with like full country, jazz, anything like that. But you know, typically people using FL probably aren't making those genres. Or if they are, usually it's all live recorded anyways and there's not a lot of this like production stuff going on. But like if you're making pop, if you're making rap, if you're making indie, this tip can be very beneficial. And essentially all it is is just chopping up the beat in place Places where you think it will sound good so like a perfect example of this is in the last hook that I have in the song right here instead of just having you know the beat continuing on as normal you know one measure leading into the next I took all the melodies and I just chopped them up and right here this may not be something you're able to do unless you already have vocals recorded in but I chopped the beat up in a way that matches what I was saying in that part of the song I'm gonna say no to my But honestly, beat cuts don't even really need to be as complicated as this. It could be as simple as just cutting out a certain instrument at the end of a phrase. Like right here at the end of the song when I transition into the guitar solo, I just made the drums not play for the last half bar. Or right here leading into the final hook, I made it so the snare doesn't play in the last half bar, along with the pad, the choir, and the bass line. And that just allows these two little guitar strums to be really emphasized before the chorus hits. Or right here during the first verse, the bass line gets chopped up a little bit, no chords play, and this shaker isn't playing. It's a super simple beat cut, but it just adds a little bit of extra flair, you know? Finally, tip number five on the list is gonna be using risers and effects. Whenever I make a beat to completion, and it's a beat that I'm gonna be writing a song to, you will see risers and effects sprinkled all throughout the beat. You don't want the transition from the verse to the hook to be boring. You want that shit to be impactful, and the way you do that is by using effects. There are tons of free riser and effect sample kits online. Pretty much all my sounds are free, I'm not even gonna lie. Like, I've only paid for a couple drum kits in my life. But despite that, look at how many different effects I have on this beat. Granted, it's not a ton, you know, I only have like three tracks of effects, like maybe occasionally four at like some really crazy parts or in some particular beats. But this is all you really need and it makes a big difference. Generally, a pretty common one is just white noise like this. That's a pretty easy one that you can find in so many drum kits and you just duplicate it, make it unique by pressing this button and then you double click the sample and hit the reverse button. And that'll make it so you have this big white noise swell followed by a nice white noise impact. Other than that, you could just get a whole bunch of different short little sound effects and risers and sprinkle them in wherever you think they will sound nice. Usually it's gonna be in transitionary segments of the song. All right, so that pretty much sums up this video. Those are five tips that you can use to improve your arrangements today. Now, I probably should have mentioned this at the start, but if you're a more intermediate to advanced producer, you probably know a good handful of these, if not all of them. But I mean, typically, if you're an intermediate or advanced producer, you're probably not watching this video on how to improve your arrangements. You probably got it down packed. So for any of my beginners out there, I really hope you got something useful out of this. Even if you already knew a couple of the tips, hopefully you didn't know at least like one or two of them, you know? Hope you learned something. Hope you found it entertaining. Hopefully you can use these tips in your music. Leave a like if you would like, and I will catch you next time. Boop.